to International Scale Modeler, I'm Lee. Today we're going to do a quick review and an in-depth one as well of this. This is the Mr. Hobby Mr. Chipping Rubber Block. Uh, now, as you know, um, I'm not an incredible a AFE guy. I'm more of a, an aircraft guy myself, so chipping is more of an AFB thing. Um, and uh, there's lots of different chipping methods out there. There's loads of books and things like that to explain how to do it with paint and sponges and washes and hairspray method and salt and all sorts of things uh, but i saw this online i was buying up a few other odds and sods and i saw this online i thought well i'll give it a go um i think it was about 10 euros something like that. so it should be about eight pounds seven pound fifty eight pounds at the moment um so i thought well I'll, I'll take a punt on it because i have got to do one very soon um uh, being uh, this this baby here, which is the uh, Tiger One, uh, for in our honour of Cohen that we started a year ago, but they still haven't got around to it. So as you can see, um, this would be ideal for that. But um, there is a reason I can't use it for that, and I'll go into that in a second. But anyway, so <clears throat> on the package, uh, as you can see, it just says Mr. Chipping Rubber Block at the bottom, the most suitable rubber file for chipping of model kit, etc., uh, etc. Et on the back. It shows you here that you apply the paint that will be the base colour, after it dries, paint the colour that will be the finished colour, rub the finished coat with Mr. Chipping Rubber Block to expose the base colour and give uh, a, 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 damaged, a damaged texture. Um, so that's it basically. Uh, so very simple. And it comes in a little plastic thing that you can just take out and pop out and uh, bob your uncle. That's done. So this itself, the rubbing block itself, as you can see, it's just, it is basically just like a, a normal rubber that you'd buy anywhere in a shop from anywhere. And to be honest with you, um, feeling it, it feels like um, a biro rubber, uh, but not quite so coarse. Uh, if you've ever had a rubber, uh, you can buy ballpoint pen rubbers. Um, they tend to eat the paper though. Uh, they rub away the paper, not the actual ink itself. Uh, this is what that feels like, um, but it's it's kind of not, as I say, not as coarse. It seems a little bit fine, but it has that texture and, and and view of it as well. So what I've done to just say, oh, well, look, there's a rubber. Uh, I actually took the time to uh, spray um, a uh, spare Tiger 1 from that tank, actually, from that kit, uh, in uh, ready for preparation for this little video. So as you can see, we've got just like the turret top. Okay, in my Mr. Hobby paint station that I recently acquired. Uh, now the paints I used were, uh, primer is AK Primer. I like AK Primer. Um, it does the job and it's nice and smooth, finishes nice and smooth. Uh, I've then, uh, the base color, I've put AK um, uh, Chipping Color, uh, which is AK7111. Okay, now I think this, this gives just the right color uh, for chipping, uh, of a brownie, offy, blacky sort of thing and I think um, this is one of the best colours I've found so far for chipping that um, looks nice anyway especially in photographs and stuff like that in model and the top colour was uh, MIG Ammo's um, Dunkel Gelb uh, 7028 MIG 10 okay so those are those are the colours we've used um, so we've got these three so that's that's the order of, of application um, to uh, to our uh, our uh, our turret here and everything okay so what I'm going to do is I will um, just start I haven't I haven't used this before I haven't even tried so I thought this would be the first time I'd be interested to see it on camera now it says on the back of the packet um, there's nothing inside it just says on the back of the packet to rub to your own desire now um, looking at this if you can, I'll zoom you in on this in a second so you're looking at this here, you've got several type of effects. You've got round the edges, and then you've got this blanket effect here, which is wearing away the paint. So all you're going to be doing is actually taking away the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you for the first time I've ever used this. Okay, so we're just going to we'll just do some edges first, and just see how easy. Now I've put uh, two coats of primer on, um, about uh, a good solid coat of the um, chipping colour and then a good few coats of the, the uh, top colour as well. So I'm just going to, as you can see, rub this over and see what sort of effect we get just on the edges. As you can see it's taking a bit of work. And you've got to be careful because look that's gone straight to it. 
And you're going to have to rub very, very gently because that's gone through to primer there, right on the edge already. So I'm already at a loss. Um, let's just see how it does on a big bit. I did well with the top coat, you see. <laughs> and you can see you get that, it's coming through now, the chipping colour. The thing is, you may say, well, I may have gone overboard with the top colour, but this is usually the, the amount of colour that I put on, on top of my models. Um, I like a good coat. Now, when I've done chipping in the past, I've always used the hairspray method. I find that to be the um, easiest way of doing things. Let's just see if we can do some edges. I mean, that's with any chipping. I mean, I'm whipping through this. But obviously, the edges are going to be a lot more. You know that's gone right through the chipping colour, and, and and that's that. Well, didn't even press hard on that, and that's gone through right through to the to the base coat on the top. Excuse my cat outside the window meowing. I think this is going to take a bit of practice to use this. Obviously, this is the first time I've used it. As you can see. There's lots of debris coming off from it and everything. Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's taken a bit to get through. Now, I kind of don't like, I've got to say I don't like that effect. Let me just zoom you in a bit. Let's see what you guys think. Okay. I think you can see that you've had to, you've kind of scuffed a lot of this surrounding paint there just to get into that paint. Now, I would imagine that the trouble is, I'd say, well, usually you do a lighter, a lighter uh, coat of the top paint, but um, I did quite a heavy coat actually, and I'm just trying to go around these edges here. And the trouble is, I'm not, I'm not pushing hard on that, and it's going straight down to the primer. It's going past the chipping colour, which I, I swamped it in chipping colour, obviously, to make sure that we've got some. And now the idea of this is that you can come in around the edges and you know rough it up a bit and all sorts of things like that. Um, but I've got to say I, I don't like it. Um, I was really hoping for something a little bit better actually. But it really is just a, a biro rubber. See I thought it would help with the, the surfaces like these, the raised surfaces on here like this turret ring and you'd just be able to go you know, and it's done, but something like that, it's taken it right back there, and I've literally just touched that over that, and it's taken it, it's gone through three coats, and it's gone straight back to be a plastic on that, on the top of there. But on here, it's really, you, you know, you, you can't go over the area that you actually want to rub down, so if you want to keep it, you have, you would have thought you would have had more control, I have to say, now there will be people out there that the pros and that, but you can see how easy it is to go through. Now I've let this dry for two days as well, so this is bone dry. Um, there's no no case of having any wet paint or anything like that on there, but that's gone straight back through to either primer or plastic in one place, and then in other places that hasn't gone anywhere. So. Um, I'm going to have to say it's a bit of hit and miss, um, and you'd hate to get to this point on your work model, and all of a sudden you go back to plastic. Okay, yes, you can touch that up. You can see it does produce this nice scuffing effect, and I think that's the only thing you could possibly use it for. There's this effect here. Let me just zoom it back out here. There you go. Okay, um, but you've got this rubber mark, so you have to be very careful how you do it because uh, you can see in the paint there these rubbing marks so it's a case of you pick an area let's try one at the back here okay just so we can keep it zoomed in and uh, let's use a fresh part of the rubber okay i'm just gonna 
Just do this little area here, just a little tiny area. Let's see how that turns out. Now, the only positive I can use for this is if you're doing like a scuffed area that's worn a lot, that's walked over a lot, something like that, you know, you've got your walk zones on an aircraft, it might be okay. But even so, it is very hit and miss, I have to say. It's, I'm just doing this tiny little area, as you can see, and it hasn't come out particularly well at all. Um, I think there's much better methods out there to do your chipping. I think the only thing this is good for is not individual chipping. You can't just, you know, go like that and get chipping, which is what I thought you might be able to do. You can see where I've um, pressed it, not very hard at all, and it's gone straight through the plastic there and there. And that was the first go. Literally, I just lightly, lightly rubbed that went straight through. So on the corners, it's too rough. And then on the flat surfaces, it's not rough enough. Rough enough. Now, that little bit there's okay. If you didn't have all these scratches, which you have to make around the area, as you can see, that even that little area there, which is, looks scuffed, you've got those, these scratches in. Now, whether they'd come out with a coat over the top, a clear coat or something, I'm not sure. But, I mean, you can get some nice wall effects and then add some chipping around it and things like that. That'll probably come up nice. But... You have got this this like, rubbed area around that shows up as you can see, and I think that's going to it's where you scratch the paint obviously, so that's going to show up in the end result. So uh, I have to say overall I'm not impressed with that. That is the first go with it. I think I'll practice a bit more. Um, I think it needs it. Uh, you leave a lot of debris. There's a lot of debris all over the you know dust and uh, things like that. So it's going to be a messy way of doing it as well. Uh, so. Uh, the Mr. Chip, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Chipping Rubber Block. Um, I would say, to be honest with you, um, that was 10, I think it was 10, 11 euros. I've already flashed that price. Um, you can go into any uh, stationery shop and buy a biro rubber uh, for, um, well, this works out about eight, eight, uh, eight pounds in, in English money. Uh, you can go and buy a, a biro rubber for like one pound. And that will have exactly the same effect. You just cut the square edges and things like that to give you the same effect. And that will have the same effect because I think that's all it is. You've got these very sparkly bits here. I don't know if you can see them on camera. Let me just zoom you in. You've got these sparkly bits here. Okay. And that's that's actually little metal filings and coarse stuff and from the rubber, which is how, how they um, take away borrow a pen on paper because it rubs the paper away, not the actual pen itself. So... Um, I'm going to have to give that quite a low score actually, uh, I'm going to say price wise it's awful because it is literally just I think a uh, biro rubber, um, so the price is awful, um, also it's not going to be good, it could be something I would say you'd have, you could have it in your arsenal as another way of doing something to add to an effect, so you maybe put this down first just to get that worn look and then chip around it and that. But you have to be very, very careful about your overshoot and everything um, because it just marks the paint, it scratches everything else. You can't get any control with it because you, you either have to rub too hard or too little. So um, it might, you, might, you might get very good with it with some practice, but to, to me, I mean, I'd say that's a 4.5, a five, if you're lucky. Um, I would probably say four, actually. I'm gonna give that four out of 10. Um, and that is my lowest score ever with anything modelling. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe you guys have used it and uh, thought it's, it's better. But for a first go, I'm looking at that and I'm saying I wanna, I'd want to at least practice another few hours with that before I even try, attempted to on a, on a model that I've spent lots of time and devotion on. Um, but uh, I'm not impressed with that at all, uh, as you can tell. So uh, until next time, take care. Bye bye.